the 25th day of December, in the 5,199th year of the creation of the world, from the time when God in the beginning created the heavens and the earth, the 2,957th year after the flood, the 2,050th year from the birth of Abraham, the 1,510th year from Moses and the going forth of the people of Israel from Egypt, the 1,032nd year from David's being anointed king, in the 65th week according to the prophecy of Daniel, in the 194th Olympiad, the 752nd year from the foundation of the city of Rome, the 42nd year of the reign of Octavian Augustus, the whole world being at peace, in the sixth age of the world, Jesus Christ, the eternal God and Son of the eternal Father, desiring to sanctify the world by his most merciful coming, being conceived by the Holy Spirit, and nine months having passed since his conception, was born in Bethlehem of Judea, of the Virgin Mary, being made flesh. Let's all continue our celebration by joining together and singing number 311, O Come All Ye Faithful. That's number 311. <laughs>
of God's self-communication of God's self to us, we always take a moment to call to mind our failings and our shortcomings. We come reminding of ourselves of this great mystery of the Incarnation, that in this begins our salvation history and the forgiveness of all of our sins. And so we come aware of our own need for forgiveness and our need to forgive others as we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. And I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. God the Father, mercy to the death and resurrection of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and send the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. So in the midst of the church, may God grant you pardon and peace, and I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. For the four weeks of Advent, for the four weeks of our preparation for this great feast. The church has been silent of her great hymn, the Gloria. But today we join in wonderful celebration with the angels who proclaim glory to God in the highest and peace to those on goodwill. So join us as we sing the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we are called.
salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voices, together they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. The Lord has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Earth has seen 
salvation by our God. Joyfully sing out all you have. Bring forth in song for all the ends of the earth and see the power of God. For all the ends of the earth and see the power of God. Sing to the Lord with harvest song, with drum. created the ages. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's image and very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son? And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. The word of the Lord. light shines in the darkness, 
in the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only begotten son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only begotten Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. Brothers, the good news of salvation, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. By the words of the Holy Gospel, may In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You might be happy to hear that I don't have much voice left, so maybe my homily this morning will be a little shorter for Christmas, right? Uh, this is, I think, my, uh, I think this is my fifth Mass for Christmas, right? But it's uh, wonderful to be here with you. I know it is the birthday of Jesus, but I think we also have another birthday today. Jaden? Yes? yes? Jane, you want to come up here for a second? Right? I, I was thinking about how we celebrate the Feast of the Incarnation and how really for us this feast is about children. And lo and behold, we have, uh, we have someone who shares Jesus' birthday, right? So, so uh, Jane, and you can turn around. Look at that smile, right? In a couple, in a couple of years, you won't come up here at all, right? So, so in many ways, um, what you and I celebrate today is the Word of God made flesh. It is a God who comes to pitch his tent amongst us, right? And he comes to us in the most vulnerable of forms. He comes to us as, as a child, right? As an infant, so dependent on his parents. And look at this wonderful child, right? Who, uh, who's growing in grace and wisdom, we hope, right, Josephine? A little bit, right? In grace and wisdom. But we see something of God's love reflected in all of us, but especially in our children at Christmas today, right? And so I think what a wonderful gift we have in Jaden, that we can celebrate both the birthday of our Savior and the, birth, the, the birthday in real in flesh here of, of someone who shares in the life of Christ through his church. So join with me today and sing happy birthday to Jaden, shall we? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Jaden, happy birthday to you. And Jesus too, right? Yes, and Jesus too. Thanks Jaden, thanks for coming up here. Probably in two years we won't, he won't ever, he won't even pretend he knows us, right? So, so right, but that's okay. But, but I was thinking about these readings that we have for today in this feast that we celebrate. It really is about the children, right? It really is about all of us, the child and all of us as well. I couldn't help think about all of the places where I've been over the last two days at the county jail, uh, uh, at a, uh, an Alzheimer's care unit, at a private home. And I think in each and every one of those places, the presence of God is so manifest in the love of all of those people that are there. And that's what we celebrate, this great feast of God's love breaking into our reality. In, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a time and place, God came to us in the fullness of time as love. 
Think about this. Think about this. There is no reason why you and I should be celebrating the feast of this Jewish infant born 2014 years ago, right? He wasn't the son of a great king. He had no connection to power. His parents were poor people of, of, of Nazareth, right? And yet today we celebrate. We celebrate this. How did we come to know this, right? The, the, the message, the first heralds of this message were shepherds. They were disreputable people. You wouldn't want to hang around shepherds, right? These were people who you wouldn't leave your wallet around. You certainly wouldn't trust sheep with them, let alone your children, right? And all of a sudden, the angels come and announce to them, go to the city of Bethlehem, and there you'll find a child wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. The manger has such significance for us. It is in the humility and the poverty of the manger that we see this God who doesn't come with much power, but comes with tremendous love. How can anyone be intimidated by a child? How can anyone be afraid of a child? And because Christ chose, God chose in the fullness of time to have his love incarnate in the person of Jesus Christ, we all have access to that. Great and small alike, right? None of us, none of us need be afraid of this, right? And that's what the angels are announcing, right? The first thing they say is, don't be afraid, right? Don't be afraid. How often we want to sink into our fear when we want to uh, uh, fence things off, right? But this celebration of the Feast of Christmas requires that we go beyond all of our fears, that we see in this child God's love for us come down in such an intimate way. These readings from Isaiah, listen to the poetry of this, 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 this passage from Isaiah. How beautiful are in the mountain are the feet of those who love God. Right? That's us. Right? We love God. We are here because of God's love. We celebrate this because love came into our world and that message was spread mostly by people who were disenfranchised from the, from the, from the society. The people who preached the message of Jesus Christ were the prostitutes and the sinners and the tax collectors. They were not people of power, right? And so you and I inherit that sense that in the person of Jesus Christ, we have a model of servant leadership, not, not a God who sits on a throne, not a God who is distant from us, but a God who is as intimate as us as our next breath. Listen to the Gospel of John here, right? We think that the author of the Gospel of John, we often associate with the beloved disciple. We don't know really who the beloved disciple is, right? We could be the beloved disciple. It's never really named. But what we do know is that the Last Supper, the beloved disciple put his head on the breast of Jesus, right? Probably right above his heart. And he heard the heart of Jesus beating. And listen to the last sentence of this Gospel, right? From the heart of God, right? From the heart of God. That's where this love comes from. We, as, as Christians in this tradition, there, are, there is no other tradition that has the, the deity, the, 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 the God that you and I come to, to love and adore. There is no other tradition that has a God who, out of love for us, out of love from his own heart, chose to become one with us, right? And that's what we celebrate at Christmas, that love has come and visited this world and it has forever changed us. It has forever transformed us. We can no longer be the same because of this, right? We do it. We celebrate with each other by giving gifts. We celebrate by sharing a meal. We celebrate by all of the things that are important to us, right? We reflect in the gifts that we give each other some dimension of our love. But that's because what we do is we join in the great celebration of God's gift, of God's love to us in the person of Jesus Christ. In the theological term, this is the culmination of God's self-communication of God to us, right? In, in, in all through our salvation history, we see the presence of God. The, uh, the, uh, the second reading, uh, the, 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 the gospel reading, is often thought to be an adaption of the hymn to wisdom, where the spirit of God, this wisdom which existed with God before the world created, right? And so we know that we know that, that, that God existed before time. And so, so what we hear in these readings is this wonderful, this kind of wonderful sense of this God who for all time has prepared this moment for us, right? Uh, for, for all time uh, has desired to become one with us. Yeah, come on, sit down. Sit down. Join us. Yeah, please. Merry Christmas. Come on, sit down. And so as you and I gather and we come to celebrate this great feast, listen to that, right? Listen to that child back there, right? I'm sure, I'm sure, that, I'm sure that Mary had her full of that as well, right? And so we hear how in this feast of Christmas, love incarnate in the person of Jesus Christ, especially for us, uh, takes place for us in, in, in all of our senses, right? Last night we gathered in the darkness outside and we had candles and we blessed the crash and we incensed it. 
And then we processed into to bells. It was amazing, right? And then and then and then we heard the the uh, the opening uh, hymn, you. right? And 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 we and, and, and you're very welcome. God bless you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Nice to see you. Right. Uh, 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 and so, so, so God comes to visit us, uh, right? In, in, in who knows, right? In human vesture, God comes to visit us. In many ways. So as as we celebrated that last night, I can't help but think about the same thing. We use music, we use sight, we use sound, we use all of our senses to involve ourselves in the encounter with Jesus Christ. And so later, uh, after the liturgy of the Word, we'll do the liturgy of the Eucharist. And you and I are privileged then to receive this God who came to us as an infant in the body and blood and soul of divinity of Jesus Christ. This gift, this gift is, is astounding. It grows and moves in our life. It moves with you in all of the moments of your life. It is this God who fills in all of the, all of the, all of, all of the valleys and mountains in our life. And that's what you and I come to celebrate today, right? That's what you and I come to celebrate is, is that for, for, for because of this love of God, we are never, never the same. All things are changed, right? And it isn't through any great power. It's simply through the love of God made manifest in an infant uh, born, uh, born in, a, in a stable in Bethlehem, the humility of the stable. So let us continue in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. and profess our faith in this loving God as we say we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of God, blood from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one in being with the Father. Through God all things were made, for us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he arose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this glorious feast of the birth of Christ, we offer our prayers knowing that through Him our God will hear and answer them. Our response, Prince of Peace, hear our prayer. Prince of Peace, hear our prayer. O Prince of Peace, turn the hearts of all peoples away from violence and lead us to new respect for human life. Guide those in authority throughout the world to promote well-being, peace, justice, and the common good. Help the nations of the world find a peaceful solution to conflict. We pray to the Lord. Prince of peace, hear our prayer. O oh, Wonder Counselor, bless us as your church in our celebration of this Christmas. Let us see through the worldly trappings of this holiday season the deeper joy of your epiphany on earth and in our spirits. We pray to the Lord. Prince of peace, hear our prayer. O oh, everlasting Father, Help our St. Francis Parish family to sustain throughout the coming year the joy and love we feel with each other today. Open our eyes to the needs of our community and inspire us to bring your light to everyone we meet. We pray to the Lord. Prince of peace, peace, hear our prayer. O oh, Comforter, pardon all who are away from home during this Christmas season. Missionaries, members of the military, aid workers, economic refugees, and those in prison. Fill their hearts with peace and reunite them with loved ones in the new year. We pray to the Lord. Prince of peace, hear our prayer. O Emmanuel, 
Let us see you in the bright faces of our children. Help us to love them, protect them, nourish them, and prepare them. May the hope that fills them in this season take root in them and uphold them throughout life's journey. We pray to the Lord. Prince of Peace, hear our prayer. O rising dawn, embrace our family members, neighbors, friends, and co-workers who have felt rejected and alienated from your church because of who they are or who they love. Give us the words and the actions that will soothe and welcome them. We pray to the Lord. Prince of Peace, hear our prayer. O Son of God, bring aid to the suffering, the homeless, the poor, and the unemployed. Console the sick. There are other many that we should especially be mindful of this day. For Nick and Pasquale and John and William. Stephen. For these we now pray to the Lord. Prince of Peace, hear our prayer. O oh, child of light, come to all families who are grieving the loss of a loved one during the Christmas season. Comfort them and bring them solace. Bless the relatives and friends for whom they mourn, especially those we now need. And in memory of those uh, who I'll name whose uh, flowers adorn the altar at Christmas, Romeo Cuevas, Vincent and Angela Cuevas, Magdalena Cuevas, Ambrosio and El Elgio Atizena, Robert Calderon, Romelio S. Cuevas, Blanca Santiago, Charles and Dorothy Clare, Mike Keenan, Sharon Doherty, the big guy, Anna and Natalie Nardone, Maria G. Nardone, Sam and Philomena Gentili, yeah. Olga Festa, Rosemary and William Postel, John and Sybil Sejanowski, Catherine Dalluzio, Carogio Mistera, Charles Cristage, Carmelo Marcabello, Susan and Bert Shapiro, Adam Girardello. For these we pray to the Lord. Prince of Peace, hear our prayer. And for Oscar Gini, who will be ordained to the priesthood, he would serve the, joy, the Lord with joy and gladness all his days. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Prince, oh, Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace, hear our prayer. We also, uh, uh, we also uh, honor uh, with these flowers at Christmas uh, Romeo Cuevas, Jillian Cuevas, Dr. Catherine Liebhauser, Theodore Palomo, Renee Ryan, Davis Williams families, the parish, John Wambu, and Angelo Faye. Prince of Peace, hear our prayer. Most high glorious God, we bring you our prayers and petitions, those which you've spoken aloud and those in the depths of our heart. We ask you to hear and answer them if they be for our good, for we make them in the name of Christ your Son. Amen. Amen. As our gifts are gathered,
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of God's name for our good and all God's church. Lord, on this solemn day accept the offering which has brought us reconciliation and perfect peace and is the full expression of our worship. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. In the mystery of the Word made flesh, your glory fills the eyes of our mind with a new and radiant vision, so that seeing God made visible in Christ, we are caught up in the love of things we cannot see. And so with angels and archangels, with all the heavenly hosts, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending chorus of praise. Holy, holy, holy. covenant. 
It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. acceptable to you which brings salvation to the whole world. Lord, look upon the sacrifice which you yourself have prepared for your church, and by your Holy Spirit gather all to share the one bread and the one cup into the one body, a living sacrifice in Christ, to the praise and glory of your name. Lord, remember those for whom we make this offering, especially your servants, the patriarchs of Alexandria, Antioch, Constantinople, Jerusalem, and Rome. I, your unworthy servant, and all bishops, the priests, deacons, and other ministers of your church, those who take part in this offering, those here present, all your people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. With these and all the dead whose faith is known only to you, Merciful Father, grant that we, your children, may, may enjoy the inheritance of heaven with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles and all your saints, there together with all creation, set, set free from the corruption of sin and death, we shall sing your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bless the world with all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever.
I was waiting for choirs of angels to sing, right? I was thinking that that is the uh, instrument of the angels, right? The harp, it was very beautiful. Thank you, Loretta. Right? Thank, you. Thank you. Loretta's daughters and her husband are here, right? Yeah, so, uh, so that was quite beautiful. My goodness. Let us pray. Merciful God, grant that the Savior of the world who was born this day to bring us new and divine life may, be, may bestow upon us the gift of life everlasting. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. I don't think there's any announcements other than I want each and every one of you to know that tomorrow you are more than welcome to come uh, by the rectory and have some, uh, some desserts from 7 to 10. Uh, it's 22 Mellon Avenue in West Orange. It's the last house on the left. There's a big Celtic cross in the front. Uh, you might see Jazz, our golden retriever, at the door. We'll uh, try to put a, a hat on him, right? If he'll keep it, I don't know that he will. But we have um, we have cookies from seven different countries. We have a real mincemeat pie, I think, from England. And uh, anyway, I think, please join us. Uh, please join us. It's very casual. It's very casual. And it's just a way to celebrate uh, St. Stephen's Day. First mark. So if you would come and uh, participate with us, we would love to have you, right? So we'd love to have you. Um, I think, um, I just, I, I don't think there's, I think there's, I think we're good until we leave. I want you to make sure that you come for Judy's ordination on January 3rd at 11 o'clock in the morning in the large church. We have clergy gathering uh, with us from the American National Catholic Church from New Mexico, from Washington, from Florida. From uh, from all parts uh, uh, North Dakota, and so and then there'll be a wonderful reception afterwards that the parish uh, here is uh, is hosting for uh, Brother Jesus. 
who is going to be raised to the dignity of, uh, of priest, right? So I just want to thank you uh, for this beautiful, uh, this beautiful music, right? I was a little surprised by our guests there. You could tell it threw me off my homily a little bit. So you guys were fortunate. That's your Christmas present, right? right? So, so, uh, so we'll pray for each other in the new year, right? And, uh, and then on uh, January 1st, which is uh, the Feast of Mary, the Mother of God, we'll be having Mass at 11 o'clock in the morning. And then many of the clergy of the ANCC will be celebrating that Mass. And then we're going to have a pre-celebratory uh, event with Brother Judy and Manny's. And you're all welcome to join us, Manny's and Montclair. So it might be fun, right? It might be nice if you uh, want to join us there. Right? So. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Bow down to the blessing. Through the incarnation of his Son, God has scattered the darkness of the world, and by Christ's glorious birth, which angels announced to the shepherds, has brightened this most holy day. May the God of infinite goodness banish the darkness of sin from your hearts, and make them radiant with the light of goodness. Amen. Amen. May God fill you with, with the joy of the shepherds, and make your heralds of the gospel. Amen. May the God who joins heaven and earth fill you with peace and goodwill, and unite you in fellowship with the church in heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us all go forth joining together and singing number 318, Joy to the World. That's number 318. Joy to the world.